Hi everyone, how are you? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be making a new salve out of comfrey. This is something I've been wanting to make for a while. If you've been around, you know that I am a huge fan of making salve out of calendula and I've been doing that for years and we've been selling that on our Etsy shop. But I've had a lot of people ask me either in person or online if I've ever made salve out of comfrey because this is a really popular plant that's used medicinally and it's got a lot of really great benefits. I've heard that traditionally it's used kind of as um, a poultice, I think it's called, where you kind of just like mash up the leaves and like put it on an open wound and it acts kind of like as an antiseptic and helps to heal the wound. But the thing I was really interested in is that it's supposed to be really good for pain, which is something that I don't think calendula salve can do because calendula also has a lot of the same healing properties. It's really nourishing and can help with like burns and cuts and bug bites, things like that. But I don't know that it specifically helps with pain and that's something that comfrey can do so I wanted to try that out and I think that would be a great thing to add to our like botanical medicine collection. Erin actually does deal with some chronic pain so I think that this comfrey salve would be something that's really good for someone like him and the way I see this being used is kind of like a pain ointment. If you've ever used something like tiger balm which is something that you put on like bruises or any like muscle pain I feel like this comfrey salve is something that would take that place and serve the same purpose. Comfrey is a plant that has been used for medicine for many many years and it's also a plant that I think a lot of gardeners these days have in their garden because it's a very popular permaculture plant so in addition to all of its medicinal uses it also is really great in the garden. There's like a special phrase for what it does. I can never remember what it is but I'll put it on the screen and this phrase means that it has really deep tap roots that mine really deep into your soil and those roots can pull nutrients and minerals from the soil and it will store all of those nutrients in the leaves of the plant. So what a lot of people like to do is what's called chop and drop where you will chop off the leaves of the plant and put it around the base of other plants as a mulch and as those leaves break down they will make those nutrients available to plants that don't have roots that are deep enough to reach the same minerals and nutrients that the comfrey plant can. So that's actually the reason that we started growing comfrey and why we have it in our garden. But then when I found out that it could also be used medicinally, I thought that I might as well give it a try. So you might already have this in your garden and if you do, that would be great. If you don't, it is very, very easy to grow. I don't know that I've ever seen comfrey sold in a garden center, but how I got my plants when I first started growing it is I actually ordered root cuttings and I got them off of Etsy. There are a ton of people who sell them so you can go look it up there. And comfrey grows really easy from root cuttings or divisions. So if you get a few root cuttings and plant those in your garden, over the years you can divide up that plant and multiply your comfrey plants. Or if you have another gardener friend, you could ask them if they have it in their garden and if they do, they can just give you a little bit of a division or cutting and then you can grow it in your garden. Sorry if you can hear the stove right now. I also have another project going. I'm making grape juice, which I will show you later on as well. So I'm gonna check on that in a little bit and show you how that's going. But first, let me show you what my comfrey infused oil looks like. I've been infusing this oil for a month. I've been infusing this comfrey oil for a month and it looks so cool and unfortunately I don't even know that you'll be able to see it on the camera. I noticed that with this comfrey oil it started taking on that green color really really quickly and I'm really curious to see what this is going to look like in the final salve and just for reference I also have a jar of my calendula oil infusing and you can see like the difference in colors. They're both so beautiful though. So today I'm gonna to be making the comfrey salve, but I'm going to be using the same recipe that I've shown for my calendula salve. Just switching out the calendula oil for the comfrey oil, of course. This comfrey has been infusing in sweet almond oil, which is an oil that I really like. It's very nourishing and moisturizing, but it's also a little bit lighter, so I feel like it absorbs really well into your skin. I also like that sweet almond oil has a more neutral color, so it can take on the color of what you're infusing it with. 
Some other oils you can use are jojoba oil, which is also really great for the skin. And you can also try olive oil, although I think olive oil is a little bit heavier, so it might leave a little bit more of a greasy feeling. So like I said, this has been infusing in the jar for a month. And I like to infuse my oils with a slower method where it basically just sits in the oil for a few weeks, a month is usually what I aim for. And as the plant particles sit in that oil, they will release a lot of their properties. And then you can strain out the plant matter and just use the oil in your recipe. If you want to speed things up, what some people do is they will actually like kind of heat up the oil a little bit. A lot of people like to use a slow cooker for this process and that way you can just infuse your oil for I think it's like a few hours and then you can use the oil after that. I choose to use the slower method because I feel that anytime you're heating plant particles, you're going to lose a little bit of the benefits and the properties. So I like to go the slower route and just let things slowly infuse over time, but it's really up to you whatever you decide you want to do. Before I put my comfrey into the jar to infuse, I did dehydrate it first because a lot of fresh plant matter has a lot of water in it and I don't want the leaves to release that water into the oil as it sits and infuses because then you have water and oil mixing together and, and then the water can go rancid whereas if it's just oil with no water then it will pretty much never go bad. So I'm gonna have to strain this out and use just the oil which we'll do in a second um, but the other ingredients for the recipe are beeswax and shea butter and those have a higher melting point than liquid oil because obviously liquid oil is already liquid at room temperature. So I'm gonna measure out my solid ingredients first and get those on the stove on a double boiler to start warming them up and get those melting. And then after that, we will strain out the comfrey leaves and add the infused oil to the sap. So if you watched my calendula sap video, it's pretty much the same process. It's just a comfrey oil instead of a calendula oil, but I will show the whole thing just in case you haven't watched that video. Or if you're curious and you wanna watch the calendula video afterwards, then I will link that in the description box down below. I'm using a digital scale to measure out all of my ingredients by weight and the ratio I'm using is 1 part shea butter, 2 parts beeswax, and 16 parts infused sweet almond oil. I'm making a pretty large batch here since I'm going to be making up a lot of tins for the shop, but you can size this up and down as needed with those proportions. If you use a different type of oil, it might be a little bit different so you'll just have to experiment with that. For my double boiler setup, I just have a pot with some water in it and then I can put my heat proof bowl over that. That way the oils are not in direct contact with the heat and this is a really gentle way to heat everything up. Here's a look at the grape juice that I'm making right now and in this pot I had just put in a whole bunch of Concord grapes and maybe like three cups of water and all of this liquid released is pretty much just the liquid from the grapes and that is the grape juice. It is a super simple process. I didn't realize that it would be this easy to make grape juice. I always thought that you needed special equipment or maybe there was like a more complicated process, but it's really as simple as putting the grapes in a pot and boiling it until they release all of their liquid. I had found a local pick your own grape farm near us and we had gone and picked 16 pounds of grapes. I'm pretty sure that most of the grapes that we picked were Concord grapes or some kind of variety that was similar to that. So it's a variety that's really good for juice and also for jelly. We didn't decide to make jelly with these since we had already made some jelly with grapes from one of our own grape vines. So we're going to be having this grape juice as is, and we'll put a few quarts of it in the fridge to enjoy for the next week or so. But we had also already made a big batch of this the day before, and we had a lot of grape juice. So what I'm doing with this is just putting it in the freezer. You can also can grape juice by water bath canning, I believe, but we are out of jars and also space to store our jars. So at this point, I am just going to freeze them for later use. Maybe in future years, I'll can the grape juice but I think I'm going to be adding grapes to my annual list of things that we like to go out to local farms to pick and preserve. 
because I am so happy with how easy and how delicious this grape juice is to make. Grape juice is not normally something I would like even choose to buy at the store, but this stuff is so good. It has such a deep, rich flavor, and I really don't even need to add much sugar to make it a really nice sweetness. These grapes have a lot of natural flavor all on their own. So yeah, definitely something that has been really fun that we have learned to do this year. The beeswax and shea butter are already starting to melt a little bit, but beeswax has a pretty high melting point, so this will take a little longer. And that's why beeswax is so great for using for salves because it will help to keep your salve solid and you'll end up with a really good consistency with just a little bit of beeswax because it will harden up your salve and that way it won't melt super easily, like especially if you leave it in your purse or in a hot car. I mean, eventually, you know, your car can get really hot, so it will melt the salve, but it will stay hard for a pretty good amount of time while still being like nice and spreadable once you warm it up in your hands or with the warmth of your body. So now I'm gonna strain out this comfrey and I'm so excited to see the color of this. I'm actually pretty surprised. The color is mostly just like golden and not really green. It looks so green in the jar. I was sure I was going to have like a green color. Some of the leaves, since they are more brittle and powdery than the calendula, they are going through the sieve. So I'm gonna have to strain this out a second time with cheesecloth just to get all of those plant particles out. But it looks like I'm gonna have about four cups which is actually twice as much as I need. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'll add more shea butter and beeswax to my bowl that I have, and then I can make a double batch of salve. So the beeswax and shea butter have had a start in heating up. They're not completely melted, but I'm gonna need to heat this up anyway because once this cooler oil hits this mixture, it's gonna start hardening again anyway. So now I'm gonna add in my infused oil. And now I'm going to do a double layer of cheesecloth into my strainer, just to try and catch any residual plant particles. And I'm gonna need 32 ounces of infused oil. So here's what that looks like now. It is really crazy how the beeswax hardened. It like made this really weird design in there. Kind of creeps me out. Okay, anyway, we have to heat this up again until everything is completely melted together. It should be completely liquid and then we can pour this into our tins. While I wait for my oils to melt, I'm going to get a start on straining out my grape juice and I'm just doing an initial strain right now. Because this grape juice is so concentrated and has such a deep flavor, I'm just trying to get some of the liquid out right now and then I'm just going to add some more plain water in there because I think that these grapes still have a lot of flavor to give up. So I'm gonna bring that back up to a boil and let that go for another 15 minutes. This way we get kind of like a secondary boil out of these grapes to get all of that flavor out of there and then I will do a final strain. Once my oils have completely melted and everything is mixed in very nicely, I'm going to proceed to pouring them into my tins. I have these really beautiful rose gold metal tins. Each of them holds about two ounces of liquid. So I'm gonna pour my melted oils into the tins and then just leave it to sit for 30 minutes to an hour. And over this time it will harden and become solid. 
and I like to do this on top of a towel in case I miss I don't want to drip oil onto my work surface. So everything's been sitting at room temperature for about half an hour and they have solidified. This is what the finished salve looks like. It's a really nice, beautiful, light yellow color. I really thought that the salve was going to be green from the comfrey, but that's okay. I didn't want to add any colorings. I just wanted it to be the natural color. So if that's what the natural color is, then I'm good with that. And here's what it looks like compared with our calendula salve. So you can see that the calendula one is a little bit more golden color, which makes sense because the flowers are like yellow and orange. So you can see the difference there. So since both of these salves have healing properties, I think that they can be used pretty much interchangeably, but I think I'll use the calendula salve still for like everyday use and the comfrey salve will be really good at almost as like a heavy duty kind of thing when you need a little bit more pain relief. But I think they're both really great things to have. So if you are interested in buying these, I will list the comfrey salve up on our Etsy shop. The calendula salve is always on our shop as long as it's in stock. And we grow all of the flowers and plants for these salves in our own garden. I think I'm even going to do a bundle where you can get one of each of these salves so that it's almost like an apothecary starter kit. So if you can't decide which one you'd like to use, you can get one of each in a little set. So that's all there is to it. A really natural, simple healing salve that hopefully will be good for pain relief. There are only four ingredients in this and there's no water, so no preservatives are needed. So this will last pretty much forever. It is solid at room temperature, but then as you use it and warm it up with your hands, it blends into your skin really nicely. Here's a close up at what the texture is like. I put some of this in this jar that I just repurposed. This one's gonna be for Aaron so he doesn't need a fancy jar. And so what I usually do is I'll use my fingernail and kind of just like scrape a small amount off. And you can see how it's like a nice solid texture but still really creamy and soft. Like I didn't really have to dig in there very hard to get that. And then I just warm it up in my hands. And then you can just use it on your body wherever you need healing or need some pain relief. And it does feel a little bit greasy at first, but then if you just like sit there for a little bit, it will absorb into your skin. So I usually like to use my salve when I'm like watching TV. I keep a little jar of this by the couch. And, and while we're watching a show, I'll put some of this on my hands so that I know that I'm not gonna be washing it off anytime soon. And then it can just like sit on my hands for a little bit. And it's really great, especially if you're working in the garden a lot. My hands always get really dry and I get like little cuts from plants and from weeding. So I always like to use salve on my hands, even though it's more of like a healing thing. I use it for everyday use because it just keeps my hands nice and moisturized and helps with healing any small issues I have. So yeah, that's all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you try making out a salve or any other plants you really like to make salves out of. I'll leave the link to our shop in the description box. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.